Price for glorification. Price for glorification. Then we'll be dwelling on two things today. The beauty of your life is when your life is full of proofs. For every great thing, there's a price tag. And value determines price. It is a price you're willing to pay that will determine the level of glorification you will experience. Everything of value is a price that determines the value. That's why gold is more expensive than wood. But the value is not the same. That's why Rolls Royce is more expensive than Mercedes Benz. The values are not worth the same. And when something is of no price, they devalue it. The way they devalue some currency. Because the value has worth dropped. So it is devalued. What is price? It is what one is prepared and willing to pay for an exchange of a particular value, good or service desired. Price is what one is prepared and willing to pay for an exchange of a particular value, good or service desired. Simply the amount of money Energy, time, resources, etc. spent to acquire a particular product, service, status, etc. at a given time. So price simply, what am I willing to pay? <laughs> Are you going to answer now? What is glorification? In this contest, it has been adored with the beauty of all Jesus paid the price for. To reveal, to manifest God's nature by engaging divine principles. I take it again in this contest, glorification is being adored with the beauty of all Jesus paid for, all that Jesus paid the price for, to reveal or manifest God's nature by engaging divine principles. It's simply making real the supernatural nature of God. That's all I'm saying. So price for glorification is willing to exchange required resources, time, energy, etc. for the manifestation of the nature of God in any given situation, place, or period. Hear this. Jesus paid the price for glorification. You agree with me? But you and I have a responsibility to bring it to manifestation by applying divine principles. We have to apply principles. Now, in Romans chapter 8, 29, 30, it said, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among what? Many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. Whom he called them, he justified. And whom he justified them, he also what? So, glorification is already there for us. Is that clear, sir? We'll all get there. So, everyone born again is born into glorification. So, it's there. But today, we'll be looking at two divine principles for manifesting God's glory. Two of them. We are born into glorification. Is that clear? There are two things we need to do for today. We take only two of them for today. That will make those glory to what? Manifest in our lives. Number one is purity. Number one is what? Purity in this context is pleasing God by living a clean life inside out, void of sin. That's the meaning. It is freedom from sin, nature, and all appearance of ungodliness. Purity is an essential price you pay if you want to enjoy glorification. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20, it says, What know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not a what? Your own. For you are bought what? With a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So we have been bought. We have been what? He has already bought us with a price. So for the Holy Spirit to manifest God's glory and nature through you, you must live a life of purity. It's impossible to manifest glorification in your lifestyle inside out if you don't live a life of purity. Because the presence of God is what makes the difference. And the presence of God in the believer is simply sustained by living a life of purity. Is that clear, sir? I'll tell you some important things to note about purity. And I'll give you four of them. A, some important things to note about purity. A, God glorifies and manifests himself in, through, and for you. When you live in purity, God glorifies and manifests himself in, through, and for you. Yet this God will only glorify and manifest himself in you, through you, for you, when you live in purity. Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Blessed are the ones who are pure. They shall what? They shall see God. Purity supernaturally turns a believer to one who can manifest God in every area of life they are involved in. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, the Living Bible says, In a wealthy home there are dishes made of gold and silver, as well as some made from wood and clay. The expensive dishes are used for guests and the cheap ones are used in the kitchen or to put garbage in. Do you hear that? If you stay away from sin, you'll be like one of the dishes made of purest gold, the very best in the house, so that Christ himself can use you for his highest purposes. Do you like that? So impurity makes it difficult for God to use someone. Another important virtue of purity is number two, God answers your prayers and blesses you. God answers your prayers and does what? Blesses you. God answers your prayers and blesses you when you live pure. Psalm 24, 3 to 6. We shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, we shall stand in his holy place. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn what? Deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his what? Salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek their what? Their face. Oh, Jacob. Shout hallelujah. In Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, it said, The hands of the Lord, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, Behold, Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your prayer, God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So when impurity is off, prayers are answered speedily. Is that clear, sir? And God will hear your prayers in the name of Jesus. Another important virtue of purity is that God makes you his friend. See, God makes you what? And so when you live a life of purity, God makes you his friend. And there's nothing that can be compared to being a friend of God. In Proverbs 22, verse 11, He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. And we know God is the king of all what? Kings. So to maintain a pure heart is to maintain the friendship with Jesus. All God calls his friends, they live the life full of God's glory and blessings. Look at the man Abraham. You call Abraham a friend of God. And when somebody is your friend, you are confident to God. So every time you are a friend of God, God tells you what he cannot tell others. You know, even in the natural, you can tell your friend you are traveling and your neighbor you will not tell. Your neighbor can be the next door and your friend is in another city. You call him and say, bro, my friend, I'm traveling. But your neighbor will not know you're traveling. 
When you're a friend of God, he confides in you. And it can only be your friend when you live a pure life. Shout hallelujah. You can't love the pleasures of the world and expect to be a friend of God. In James chapter 4 and verse 4, the living Bible says, you are like an unfaithful wife who loves her husband's enemies. Don't you realize that making friends with God's enemies, the evil pleasure of this world, makes you an enemy of God. I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy the evil pleasure of this unsaved world, you cannot also be a friend. So to be a friend of God, you must hate what God hates. The easiest way to keep yelling from God is to be his friend by living a life of purity. In Exodus 33 verse 11, the A path, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto what? His friend. Say, hear God as a man hears what? His friend. When you live a pure life, you hear God. You don't struggle to hear God. May you hear God from today. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. And D, your conducts become pleasing and acceptable to God. Your conducts become pleasing and acceptable to God. Your life becomes pleasing to God once purity is in place. No matter what you offer in the kingdom, once purity is out of place, it will never be pleasing to God. If you like, give the highest offering. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, the amplified classic is a shun youthful lust and flee from them and aim out and pursue righteousness. All that is virtuous and good, right, living, conformity, to the will of God in tough word and deed. And aim and pursue what? Faith, love and peace. Harmony and concord with others. In fellowship with all Christians who call upon the Lord out of a your heart. Shout hallelujah. Faith, love, peace are supreme and core of Christian character. But if they are offered with an oath, without a pure heart, it becomes unacceptable and not pleasing to God. Shout hallelujah. So there are benefits for living a pure life. If you want to see the glory of God, number one, what do you do? Purity. What is it? Purity. He that sanctified himself. So God is not the one who is going to do it for us. We have to do it ourselves. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Sin is sin, no matter who is sinning it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have to come back to righteousness. Number two. Number two prize for glorification is dedication. Is what? Dedication. John chapter 12, 23 to 26. Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Very, very I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall what? And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26, finally. If you end, we shall hold it together. If any man serve me, he will my father. Galatians 2.20 Paul speaking with a statement, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself. Dedication is deadly commitment to God and his kingdom. It's a deadly commitment. When you say I'm dedicated, you're saying I'm committed to what? God and his kingdom. Now, so number two is what? Dedication. 
Nobody's life, hear this, will be more glorious than his level of dedication. Your choice for dedication today guarantees your distinction tomorrow. Many are dedicated to things not dedicated to God. You have to be dedicated to God and his kingdom. You want to shine. For a dedicated man, you can't stop advancing as long as you are dedicated. When your life is sown as a seed, then your destiny becomes dignified and glorified. That will be your testimony. Look at the man Abraham, for instance. It was dedicated. It was what? It was, it's a, it was so dedicated that there was nothing God told him that he was not ready to do. When you are dedicated, you don't do things as convenient. You do things as commanded. A dedicated person don't do things as what? Convenient. You know, for instance... I tell Bible school students, I say going to Bible school is different from going to service. You know, sometimes Bible school closes 4 and service starts 4.30. You know, many people from Bible school, they just go home. That is, going home is like going to work. Church is different from Bible school. For Bible school, you came for lectures. That is not church service. Dedication is when, even when it's not convenient, you do it because of God's sake. Do you understand how it is? Like for instance, evangelism is not covenant. Don't tell me. Evangelism is not covenant. Evangelism is not what? I know. But you are doing it because you are dedicated. You understand now? Going for evangelism is not covenant. Though. It's not what? But you are doing it because you are dead. You are sold out to God. Then you just stand out. You live in a far place and you still come to church without feeling it that you're coming to church. Are you getting what I mean? You don't see it as a Anything, and you love doing it. That's what I mean by dedication. Say, my life is it what? In Christ. You are dead to self. You are alive to God. That's dedication. You are dead. What that rain? Son. You just do things of God. You don't do them when you want something. You do them whether you are eating or you are not eating. You don't come to church only when you have problem. You come to church whether you have problem. Now, I'll tell you what dedication does. You, you will be surprised. Look at this scripture from Mark chapter 4. 30 to 32. Everybody look. Let's read together. Shall we read 30 to 32? Want to go? And he said, Where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of mustard seed, which when is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and become greater than all herbs, and shooted out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. You know the meaning? When you are dedicated, you are sown to the things of God, you just get, get bigger and bigger without struggle. Do you understand what you're going to say? Things will begin to happen in your life that people will begin to wonder, how is this thing happening? Dedicated people don't struggle for God to glorify himself in their lives. So your life as a seed to his what? Kingdom. That's dedication. So your life as a what? Be sold out to God. That's what it means. Begin from where you are. Don't say tomorrow. Begin from where... Don't say, no, I will do it tomorrow. No, no, begin from where you are. The level where you are now, be dedicated. You're a student, be dedicated. You're a worker, be dedicated. You're a businessman, be what? Any position you are, dedication makes you unstoppable. Now, look at the man Daniel. He said, the king said to him, the, the God whom thou servant continually, is he able to what? That is dedication. He said, the work, dedication is not occasionally. So he said, the God whom thou servant what? Continually, when he was thrown into the lion's den, verse 20, he said, The God whom that what? Served continually. Is he able to what? Deliver you. Dedicated people don't serve God occasionally. They serve God what? 
they, they are not, they don't do it when it pleases them. They do it anytime. And you will know whether you are dedicated when especially you are going through some challenges. You know, it's easy to serve God when you are not going through challenge. That's when you know whether you are dedicated. When you, the way you expect things to be, maybe they don't come that way. And you see whether you are still serving. Because when you maintain your dedication, your translation is from one level to another. You just go from one level to another. Be dedicated to God and expansion of his kingdom. Dedication ends frustration. It ends what? It is full-time Christianity that pays. What did I say? Part-time Christianity does not pay. One leg, church, one leg, outside. It is, nobody has been dedicated to God that does not have a testimony, not one. It may not be instant, you may go through some challenges, but at the end it will speak. It may not be instant, but at the end it will. I've never seen a dedicated Christian without a testimony. Your own will soon come. Don't mind what is happening for somebody who does not dedicated. It's a temporary thing. For a dedicated Christian, it may take some time. But at the end, give every assignment in the kingdom of God a full-time attention. That dedication. Give every assignment in this kingdom a full-time what? Any assignment, give it a full-time attention. Dedication is not, <laughs> it's not Tito. Dedication has to do with sacrifice. Is that not true? Is it convenient after work you come to church? It's not convenient. Is it convenient? You are supposed to go home and eat a bar. And eat your dinner. And here you're coming to church. Some of you even abuse this. Are you the bishop of the church? Some of you they abuse you. It's not true. They said, the way you're going to church, are you the father of church? But if you're not dedicated, they can give you an appointment during time of service. I say, yes. Governor said I should come. That's how you know dedication. A non-dedicated person, somebody can look, devil will come through somebody and say, 4.30, come and see me. If you are dedicated, say, sir, I, I'm going to church after service, I will come. But if you are not dedicated, he said, do you know what? That man says, you come 4.30. Hey, eh? yeah, pastor, I'm coming Sunday. But when you are dedicated, he say, excuse me, sir, I will come, but after... To a non-dedicated person, the kingdom of God matters nothing to you. Well, all I've said is two things. Accept to pay the price for purity and total dedication and enjoy the life of glorification. Purity and total what? Dedication. Those are the two things you are ready to pay the price. It's not convenient. Is it convenient? But those are the two things that will bring Glory. Lord, I've heard. I receive grace to pay the price. The price you're willing to pay determines the level of glorification you enjoy. The price you're willing what? Will determine the level of glorification you enjoy. I was living in Victoria Island and I was going for evangelism in Akowonjo in Lagos. Is, ah, is, I was going for evangelism every Saturday. Because the church was, I could have done evangelism by VI. But most of the souls were where the church was at Yanakwaja, a place called Yanakwaja in, in Lagos. And I was not living where? After Babbage. So Saturday morning, I'll go call my wife, you know, where Call ship. I said, let's go out. Two of us will now move from house to house, but our own is with the gospel. I said, Jesus loves you. Look at where I was living. It's not near. It's not near. When I see people in Abuja, I say, my distance 40 minutes is far. I laugh at them. I say, 40 minutes, you say it's far. No traffic in Abuja. Well, Abuja has no traffic. What is traffic in Abuja? If you live in Lagos, Lagos you are born into traffic. Lagos is New York and D.C. at closing hour. You know, 
Lagos was the worst. And I've not seen any city like Lagos because you can be in Lagos for five hours, no movement. At least this year it will be moving. That of Washington DC, you see it moving rush hour. So when you go out in Lagos, you have time to go out, you don't have time to come back. Saturday, I will leave Victoria Island and go to go on join for evangelism. Every Saturday. And we we'll preach. I was not a pastor, understand? I was not a what? It was not confident. Oh, oh no. But I was enjoying it. I didn't say, God, what is this? Saturday. Nobody forced me. They didn't say, if you don't bring one soul, you will not pass in Bible school. They didn't say so. Nobody told us that kind of thing. They, they didn't use that as a yastic. They didn't say, if you don't bring soul, you won't pass Bible school. I just loved it. I just said, I can't be a believer and not win souls. So every Saturday, there was a month I won 56 abiding souls. I had to take record that month. I mean, I don't mean 56 preaching. That is, they did Holy Ghost baptism, water baptism, foundation class, established as a brother, 56, one month. Lord, I receive grace today to put these two things to practice, to live a life of purity and to be sold out to you and your kingdom. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace to live a life of purity and to be sold out for you and your kingdom all the days of my life. To live a life of dedication. Go ahead and receive grace in the name of Jesus. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, there's no man who is dedicated or who lives a pure life without a reward. Lord, as I put this duty to practice, my reward comes speedily. The reward is glory. If God should glorify you, nothing, you don't struggle. Is that true? Lord, let your glory be revealed in my life. Go ahead, name of Jesus. Glorify yourself in my life. As I put it to practice, Now, I was told and I saw something, Psalm 66 verse 18. And you know why David was a different man? He said, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He genuinely repented. Genuinely what? He said, I refuse to put any iniquity. Genuinely what? Repented. That was why David was different. He genuinely turned. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. When a man genuinely turns, God answers you. It's not making mistakes, but genuine repentance. Sometimes we don't turn totally. We turn halfway. Lord, whatever will make me miss heaven, show it to me. In case I don't know, I turn completely from whatever is contrary to you. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. See, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. La brosica to bregedia kata. Grace is alone. Break it here. Blessed be God forever. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. This weekend, as you obey, every soul you win may bring forth a testimony. For everyone that goes out, even for the old souls, may your reward be very heavy. As you put to practice the things you have heard, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. Whatever is your trouble and concern, it turns to a miracle. It is well with all of us. May this weekend be the best weekend. Since we were born. In Jesus' mighty name.